define humanity? Are you going to really ask me to define what it means to be human? The way that we're connected to technology is, is begging the question of what does it mean to be human? And how far will that go? We will move from the current human world into a post-human world of humans that have been enhanced, improved, augmented. Anybody who's been vaccinated, anybody with a cochlear implant or a pacemaker, anybody wearing glasses or contact lens is already an enhanced human. So the question is not, should we enhance humans? We're already doing it. The question is, what are the enhancements that people are comfortable with? I'm Jamie Metzl, author of the book Hacking Darwin, Genetic Engineering and the Future of Humanity, and a member of the World Health Organization Expert Advisory Committee on Human Genome Editing. My name is Nettie Okorafor, and I'm a writer from Phoenix, Arizona. I'm Anders Sandberg, Senior Research Fellow at the Future of Humanity Institute at the University of Oxford. My name is Jose Cordeiro, Director of the Millennium Project and Fellow of the World Academy of Art and Science. We humans are still evolving. We are evolving throughout history, but biologically it takes millions of years. We separated from other monkeys maybe between six and eight million years ago, and we still evolve, but it will take millions of years. However, now we can do this with technology. We are merging with our technology uh, that helps us, improves us, complements us. Right now, I carry around my iPhone in, in my pocket. Is it so different if my iPhone or that technology was in my glasses? What about in a contact lens? What about in a chip? As our technology becomes more advanced, that technology is going to come inside of us. And it's going to come inside of us with machine interfaces, and some people are already doing that. And it will come inside of us in our ability uh, to edit, in some ways, our own biology. There are body augmentations now that, that people do consider. Prosthetic limbs, and they're looking at how prosthetic limbs can connect to nerve cells. And, and so not only can you control it just in, in the traditional way, but you'll be able to control your prosthetic limb just by thinking about how to move, moving your hand or moving your ankle. We already live in a world where our brains and our external machines are interacting all the time. Uh, and in many ways, the human brain is an unknown black box, but we are going to understand cognition even more. And we're going to connect with these non-biological, intelligent systems. What if you took my brain, scanned it in detail, finding every neuron and how we're connected together, and created a replica inside a computer? So now there would exist a digital version of me that could think at computer speed, uh, be copied and uh, move across the solar system by radio. There could be many of me at the same time. I think that would be very practical and I would look forward to it, all of me. We are increasingly moving toward a world where parents and others uh, will have the ability uh, to, in many ways, alter some of the genetics and system biology of future children. This is very, very scary to many people for good reason. This is a very, very, very serious issue. My underlying philosophy when it comes to technology is technology is not in itself evil. It is what we make of it. It's what human beings bring to it. Some people have suggested that we should get neural interfaces, brain implants that allow our brains to control computers. And that might be one way of getting our values and emotions into machines. They're basically being trained by what we are feeling. Just because we can do something doesn't necessarily mean we should do that thing. The core issue is not technology, it's values. Science and technology will help us to transcend human limitations. We're going to have to leave this planet 
we can't do it with the biology that we have. And that future needs to begin somewhere, and now is a, is a good time to start. In the next decade, we will have the first human colony on the moon, and also probably the first human colony on planet Mars. And we will see how tiny, how small our planet Earth is. This will give us a greater view of humanity, a greater view of the universe.